Hello. Portuguese police investigating the disappearance of three-year-old Madeleine McCann, who went missing on holiday in the Algarve 15 years ago, so they formally identified a suspect. They haven't named them, but it's believed to be a convicted sex offender known as Christian B, who's currently in jail in Germany on drugs offences. Simon Jones reports. Next month, it will be 15 years since Madeleine McCann disappeared. What happened to her remains a mystery, despite numerous international investigations. It's been agony for her parents. They've always clung to the hope that their daughter is still alive. But the authorities in Germany strongly believe Madeleine was murdered. And now prosecutors in Portugal, looking into what happened in Prado de Luz, have identified a suspect, a person of interest. He's not been named, but German police have been investigating this man, referred to as Christian B, a convicted rapist, in connection with Madeleine's disappearance. He's currently in jail. Officers say he was regularly living in the Algarve between 1995 and 2007. He has always denied any involvement. There have been TV appeals for information, but the authorities have never had enough evidence to charge him. Madeline went missing from a holiday apartment on the 3rd of May 2007 while her parents were having dinner at a nearby restaurant. In July 2013, the Met Police opened its own investigation, saying it had new evidence and new witnesses. And it was in June 2020 that German police first revealed they had a suspect. There have been searches in Portugal, but no breakthrough. In less than two weeks, a statute of limitations would take effect, meaning under Portuguese law, it would no longer be possible to make someone a person of interest. But it's understood this latest development is driven not by timing, but by strong indications that a crime has taken place. There have been many false dawns in the investigations into what happened. The police in Germany have previously warned their inquiry, like the others, could end without a charge. But Madeleine's parents have always said they need to know what happened so they can find peace. Simon Jones, BBC News. Our Lisbon correspondent, Alison Roberts, is in Portugal. Yesterday, they issued a statement saying that on Wednesday, uh, uh, an individual had been named as an official suspect. Uh, that was uh, an international request from Portugal to the German authorities to inform that person of interest that they had been made an official suspect. As your, your previous inter interviewee said, this is always a significant step because it means effectively that someone is being or will soon be questioned under caution. That's to say questions may be put that could incriminate them, which gives them the right not to answer, of course. So it's actually a status to protect that individual, but it is always significant as it's a necessary prelude to charges at some point, although there is no sign of that just yet. OK. And it is reported that this suspect is a man already in jail in Germany on drugs offences, a man who is a convicted sex offender. He has previously been found guilty of raping a 72-year-old woman. That's right. Uh, that is the understanding on the basis of the fact that, uh, as we have been saying, German prosecutors have made a person who they name as Christian B., uh, a suspect in their own investigation for almost two years now, June of 2020. And they've even given interviews talking about their confidence in the evidence that they have, although they, again, have not moved forward. The Portuguese prosecutors are always much more tight-lipped, so no interviews there about what's been going on. But the fact that the German prosecutors have been working at their end for so long and they have expressed such confidence uh, would suggest that the Portuguese feel now able to take a step. Tell us about the significance of the timing, if there indeed is any significance to the timing. Well, it's possible that the timing does uh, have some significance in that it will be in less than two weeks, 15 years to the day since Madeleine was reported missing back in 2007. Uh, when the 15 years in up, is up, in theory, that would mean that a person of interest could no longer be named. However, uh, given the pandemic and other things that might delay such a move, it's likely that a court uh, would allow for some uh, delay. But it, so it may be a symbolic move, uh, but certainly prosecutors here are saying, no, no, this isn't about timing. Uh, it's about the strong indication of the practice of a crime, in their words. There will be some younger viewers who perhaps don't know the details of, of the Madeleine McCann case. 
But we can't overestimate, really, what a massive story it was at the time. Yes, it was huge here in Portugal, obviously. It was huge in the UK, but it was huge around the world. There were reporters coming from quite literally around the world, world from us, obviously from the US, but also from Japan, India, <clears throat> everywhere, uh, fascinated not only by the by the sad crime itself and, and the drama of the situation that the family found themselves in, uh, but also later just the, the whole ins and outs of the investigation, which became really quite torturous with uh, the initial uh, lead investigator uh, being taken off the case and then resigning from the force. He was accused of a number of things in the Portuguese media. Later, Madeline's parents, Kate and Jerry McCann, actually sued him after he wrote a book about the case. So um, that was all going on for years, even as investigators in three countries, Portugal, uh, the UK and Germany, continued with their investigations. Let's talk to Jim Gamble now, child protection expert, former police officer, and he actually carried out a review of the case over a decade ago. Hi, Mr Gamble. Thank you for talking to us. Now, this, this question about the timing of this move, what the um, prosecutor's office in Portugal is saying is, it's nothing to do with the timing, but actually, quote, strong indications of the practice of a crime. What does that tell us? Well, I, I hope that is right, that it is that the indications and the evidence that's available has strengthened. Uh, but of course, the timing is important. Um, we were having discussions, you know, four or five months ago about the statute of limitations and the legal framework within Portugal. And there was an awareness of the pressure. And I don't think anyone would have wanted to roll the dice by going to court to say, look, we'd like to extend um, this, this time of 15 years beyond that because of the pandemic. Mm. So I think, you know, both issues, both issues are, are, are true and, and credible. But we have now got someone who has been identified with the Aguido state, uh, status, a person of interest. And, and that person of interest is really interesting insofar as I think there now is circumstantial evidence, uh, thanks to the Germans and some of the work of New Scotland Yard and the Portuguese, to demonstrate that they were in proximity thereby had opportunity and the profile of their known predilection for crime, the crimes that they've already committed, the burglaries, uh, the rape uh, and, and the other crimes of that nature, I mean that they are a good fit. So they're not charged yet, but this is a necessary step en route to that if the Portuguese are able to put everything together. And this man, Christian B, denies any involvement in the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Um, what is the circumstantial evidence, Jim? Do you know? Well, I mean... When I did the review back in 2010, I think, Victoria, you and I may have discussed this before. We did, we, yeah. We, we identified, you know, a number of issues. The golden hour was lost. There was chaos and when Madeline first went missing. The crime scene wasn't properly sealed, so some forensic opportunities were missed. Um, information was being held all over the place, so it wasn't as if this was a an investigation that was operating a home system, a major inquiry um, computer-based system to make sure all information was captured, collated and analysed. But the key thing I felt at the time was when we identified that there was a cell site, a dump of information about telephones um, that would show you where a telephone was, not tell you, you know, what was said, but show you where that phone was at a particular time immediately around uh, the, the time of the crime. And that had never been properly interrogated. And what I think is really interesting when I say proximity is, we do know that a phone attributed to this particular suspect was in proximity to the crime scene within about a 30 minute window. And that's significant. Then you look at the circumstantial evidence, this suspect lived in that area between 1995 and 2007. In fact, in 2005, we know he committed a rape of an older woman in that area. We also know that this individual from court papers that have been seen was involved in, in burglaries from hotel rooms and holiday lets. So in proximity, a history of breaking into hotel rooms, a, a sexual um, crime history involving older women, but absolutely uh, with, a, with a potential look at younger children where it had an earlier conviction. And if you look at the, the camper van that's linked to him, there were children's clothing found there. And also they were able to link a thumb drive with indecent images of children on it. So when you begin to put all that together, 
Whether he committed this offence or not, we can't say until he's convicted, but he certainly is an extremely nasty piece of work. You know, this is a dangerous character. So, yes, we'll be cautious about what we say in this case, but he is a convicted rapist. He is someone that's been found in possession of these images, and he is someone we know that was breaking into people's holiday homes and hotel rooms. But if that evidence was as, as strong as it sounds when you describe it like that, would he not have already been charged? I mean, isn't, isn't, isn't the missing link still something that links him directly, some forensics that link him directly with Madeleine McCann? Well, well, that's absolutely right. You're looking for that last piece of the jigsaw puzzle. Mm. Circumstantial evidence as it sits, if you take one piece of evidence that he'd lived in the Algarve, that, that's one piece that by itself means nothing. It's when you put it all together that it becomes you know, overwhelmingly influential, but it doesn't prove the case. So, so I do think the Germans have always kept, you know, the, their key suspicion, the key piece of information very close to their chest. But the level of confidence they have demonstrated, and I've worked with the BKA and the German police in the past, the level of confidence in their public statements isn't something um, to, under, to, to underestimate. So why so haven't they charged him then? Well, well, they haven't been able to, and that's why I think we're dealing with different types of systems. Right. So outside of the UK, when the Germans, for example, would make a particular statement, they would have to share information with the suspect. I think the, the golden nugget that they may have is something that they do not want at this stage to share. Right. So working with the Portuguese and, that I'm sure, New Scotland Yard, pulling it all together, um, what this status does is provide the Portuguese with the opportunity to extradite uh, the suspect back to Portugal and perhaps to to deliver the, the, the critical interview. Uh, do I think he'll make an admission? No, I don't. Um, but, but only time will tell. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've had any contact with, with Kate and Jerry McCann, Madeline's parents, in, in recent times. Um, but, they, you know, they have, they have obviously been through absolute hell. And there have been, you know, fal false hope, false leads before, haven't there? Yes. This case could, you know, this, this, this current development could mean everything to them or nothing. They will have had those highs and those lows. And, and the fact of the matter is this. You know, they've had to go on every day. They've brought up, you know, their twins, Sean and Emily, with this shadow always hanging over them. And it's not been made any, any easier for them as the parents of missing children. And parents, may I say, that having looked at the evidence over the years, that there's none that implicates them in any credible or serious way. But they still have to suffer the taunts and the online bile generated by some individuals who are judge, jury and executioner on the back of partial pieces of information. So I really hope we get a result because that's what everyone wants. It's what the parents need. And actually, it should cause some people to have difficulty looking in the mirror when they reflect on what they've done and what they've said over the past 15 years. Jim Gamble, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you.